I'm Peggy Simmingson, Associate Professor of Literacy Studies at the University of Texas at Arlington. And we're here today to talk about the master's program in Mind, Brain, and Education. My name is Mark Schwartz, I'm Professor and also Director of the Southwest Center for Mind, Brain, and Education. Great, welcome. Can you tell us about the master's program in mind, brain, and education, and tell us a little bit about what students learn? So the program was conceived out of the idea that both students, practitioners, educators, everyone who's involved in the educational process can learn something about that particular process with the idea that the cognitive sciences and the neurosciences could inform the work that we're doing. It also has a strong research component as well, because we believe that not only should we be good consumers of knowledge, we should be also good producers of knowledge. And so we're seeking a balance between the two, both consuming and producing information. The master's program may be weighted a little bit more towards consuming than producing, but in any case, it really tries to give a complementary view of how knowledge is built over time. Okay, and then how, what types of courses do students take and how many courses? The program has room for 12 courses, nine of which are required, three are electives. The nine build on a, a sequence of key themes. For example, uh, the role of emotion, for example, in learning. Or, for example, um, how math or languages unfold, both in normal situations and in atypical situations. We also look at the basic construction of knowledge. How do we produce it? Uh, what kinds of tendencies do we have for favoring one way of, of coming to a conclusion versus another? The program begins with an introductory course that, kind of, that gives you an overview of the remaining eight required courses. And then the remaining three are, as I mentioned, electives, two of which come from a, pres a prescribed list, and the, and the very last one is from um, a general, uh, the, really all the courses that the university offers that might fit uh, the student's particular needs. I might add that this is a part-time program, so students are here twice a week in the evenings, 5.30 mm. to, to 8. So this is a program that is accomplished in two years uh, after work hours. Okay, great. And then, let's see, how, how can students use this degree for their careers? So that's the question that students ask me all the time. The, the traditional way that I've been, I have been answering this question is that it certainly makes you a much more powerful educator. You understand the educational process better, that is from the student's point of view and from your own point of view, the educator's point of view. And so I, that in itself makes you a powerful member of the educational community. But some of my students have taken the basic principles of mind-brain education, these, uh, these ideas of the learning process, and to apply them in new, in new areas. For example, I have students who are working in museum settings now, um, another student who is working in a hospital. Uh, in both of these contexts, there are, in this case, children involved, children who, well, in the museum context, who are coming for a learning experience, but in the hospital context, children who are there for, for reasons that are taking them out of school and maybe denying them the opportunity for an educational experience. So there's an opportunity for MBE to weave in an educational experience into children who are both in inpatient and outpatient uh, care. So those are two areas outside of what I would consider maybe a traditional way of using the uh, MBE degree. What I guess I'd like to convey is that wherever there's a learning opportunity, so I've just mentioned three, but you can imagine any situation where there are individuals together trying to learn something. The principles of MBE apply, and the degree then generally would be very, a, very useful, uh, a very useful tool. Okay, thanks. And then finally, how can students find out more about the program? Who can they contact? Well, I, uh, going directly online uh, to the university course and then to the college and then uh, the MBE program is featured on the website, uh, contacting me. Uh, I'm also uh, easily found uh, through the, uh, the UTA uh, faculty web search. Directory, uh, okay. Directory, yes. Great. Uh, those are two ways that come to mind. Thanks, uh, Dr. Schwartz. Uh, yes, thank you.